Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sulian Cruz Diaz. I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator at Families Empowered, and we're so excited to have you guys on. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Um, if we can go ahead, I want to go ahead and get started. I know we're running a couple minutes late, so thanks for still sticking in there. We have Ms. Sanchez and Mr. Dilly here. Um, and will you guys introduce yourselves, introduce the school you, um, you are representing, where the school is at, um, just pretty much introduce us to you guys. Hi, this is Mr. Billy. I'm the school principal. Uh, I have been in education system more than 15 years, and I am excited to see you guys in traditional uh, school system. And uh, if you have any other questions, please ask me uh, during the Q and A section. Thank you. Good morning. I am Miss Sanchez, and I am one of the assistant principals on campus. Um, we are SST Advancement and we are located in Houston, um, and we are here to answer any of your questions, and it's a pleasure to be here. Perfect. Um, so we are so excited to make sure that our audience, that you guys listening in, are commenting or asking any questions you have at all. Um, that is why Ms. Sanchez and Mr. Dilly is here to talk about SST um, advancement. We wanted to thank Raisin, uh, Raisin Canes for sponsoring us and for giving in-kind donations. Um, so make sure to comment, ask a question, say hello to be entered in for, um, for a chance to win um, some gift cards. Or excuse wow. me, some uh, gift baskets, yeah. <laughs> so um, can you guys tell me just a little background? So what grades uh, does SST have? And um, is it a new school? Is it an old school? Um, just tell me a little bit more about the campus. Okay. Uh, we're going to go one question me and the other next question is Sanchez. So we can jump into each other section as well. So, uh, our campus is established 2016, like four years ago. And we are serving pre-K through eighth grades right now. And our like, accomplishments, uh, we have been National School of Character and earn all possible state distinctions, uh, seven distinctions last year. And we have a very challenging and, uh, you know, a challenging curriculum, one-on-one uh, one -on -one, uh, interaction with the students and uh, family environment, you know. Ms. Sanchez, you wanna add anything else? Sure, um, we're very excited that we're moving into a brand new building. So we've been in a very small building that we've outgrown um, in the last four years. And now we're moving into a brand new campus. Um, so we're very excited about that. And we're an A-rated school. Um, we have a very diverse population, um, staff and students. And we're very family oriented. Um, we're happy, uh, happy staff. Uh, we love our staff. Um, we have great teachers. And um, we're a national school of character, so we uh, govern our school by core values. And we have five core values that we use um, constantly on campus. Um, and they represent the word circle. So it's caring, integrity, responsibility, uh, citizenship, and leadership for everyone. And that is um, basically our school motto and what we use um, diligently every day to promote our school culture. That's wonderful. That's wonderful, making sure that all the students there, as well as the teachers and the administration is, is supporting a well-rounded um, a human being, right? Yes. That's wonderful. And I'm sorry, do you mind repeating again, what grades do you guys support again? Pre-K through eight. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. So anybody out there listening that has any kids going into pre-K next year, all the way up to eighth grade, um, stay tuned for more info okay or stay tuned to the video so i wanted to get into what we're living today right we are why we're doing a facebook live in the first place um we are living through a pandemic right now and i wanted to um to kind of dive in how are you guys supporting your families during this pandemic how are you supporting your students and your community in the fall, our um, most of our 
well, our, our classes were online. So in the fall, we um, had Zoom classes, live classes for the teachers online. The teachers also had office hours where they met individually with the parents and the students. Um, we had additional teachers to support all of our special programs that um, met with different students to be able to help them to get online, to figure out the system and how it works, to be able to complete the online assignments, to be able to use the online software. Um, we also are really big about celebrating. So um, we also did online birthdays. Um, we did award ceremonies at the end of the year. We had a graduation parade, um, which was a lot of fun where everyone just came by in their car and um, we celebrated the best way we could um, all their accomplishments at the end of the school year. The difference uh, from I mean, other schools, if you ask me what's the difference, the difference is the communication. The difference is like the relationship between uh, not only student and teachers, but also the relation between parents and admin. You know, we have very close, like a family relationship between all stakeholders. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. each, each staff member, each stakeholder member, you know, we, we have really good relationship. Even students, even parents, they can reach their uh, teacher at least by phone, by email, different way. There are always two-way communication. Even like birthdays, we have, uh, even though small details, details, it makes huge difference. Not only academic wise, but also social emotional support, you know, our counselor helping the students because this is, this hardship is really hardship, you know, not only for kids, but parents as well. Everybody needs support. Everybody needs a positive engagement, you know, so the difference are uh, uh, from other schools, the relationship. Very strong, positive relationship between stakeholders. Mm -hmm. That's great, that's great. And so um, to, I guess I, I know we'll touch upon it in a little bit, um, but Eleanor had asked, what does um, what does next fall look like? Is it going to be all online? Is our parents going to be able to choose um, if they choose one? And then are they going to be able to choose maybe a different? Um, I know some campuses are saying parents are going to be able to choose if they want to be 100% virtual or if they want to be partly in classrooms. Um, and some institutions are saying once you choose one, you got to stick with it. Other ones are saying you can go back uh, to whichever one, depending just because all of us are living through it, right? Every week changes, every day changes. Um, and so what, what is your plan moving forward for the fall? Actually, that's very dynamic questions. And every day, every week, it's changing. But as of today, uh, we have two op options, you know, to, we, we are planning like 30% of the capacity on campus if they would like to send their kids. And it is like between 14 kids per classroom. Because based on the square feet, we have a we, we have a very brand new building. Based on the uh, classroom size, building size, we are getting like 14 kids per classroom. And we also provide online service as well. Okay. Ms. Sanchez, you wanna talk about it? It's kind of noisy right now around my home. <laughs> So we, yeah, so as he was saying, we will be providing the choice of which one the parent would um, feel more comfortable with. Um, this is new territory for all of us, right? So we're all going to be learning, but um, we're filing the guidance from TEA and um, trying to provide both ways of learning. Um, based on the guidance that they give us, then we will be able to determine the schedule how many days, um, because we will have to have less students in the classroom at a time. So depending on the guidance, we're waiting on more information from TEA, then we will provide a schedule. How many days a week will the student be in class and how many days a week possibly will the student learn from home online? Um, it can be either or or a mix. Perfect. Um, but I'm not sure if off the top of your head, I'm, I'm adding in questions from, the audience as they come in. 
Um, and I'm not sure if you're able to answer this question off the top of your head, but we have a parent, um, Tina, who lives in the zip code um, 77449, and she wants to know which campus may be closer to that zip code. Would it be SST um, and SSC advancement will be closer, and she can also see the map of our campus, you know, other campuses. Uh, what she's going to do, she just go to our website and look at other campuses as well. Because even though we got the zip code, it may be far away from our campus. I don't know which side of the zip code, you know, it's very big. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a very big zone for us. But she can go to our school webpage and check out other uh, campuses, campus locations. Perfect, thank you. And so um, getting back to campuses, if you, mm -hmm. if a parent goes to do virtual, um, I know you said they, they have both options, but if, if a parent did choose to go virtual, how, what kind of day, can you tell me what the day of the student would look like? Is it um, sitting in front of the computer from 7 to 7.30 or 8 a.m. until 4 p.m.? Or what, what is the structure? Uh, uh, this I just, you go first and then I'll tell my... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't want to say anything definite or 100% because, of course, these things may change. Um, the way that we did it in the fall, um, the students would have different days where they were attend their different classes. So they weren't on the computer all day long. Um, they had assignments for each day of the week, and then on specific days, specific times, they attended each one of their classes. So they may attend a class from 10 to 12 mm -hmm. um, each day, Monday through Friday. And then the other time, they would have to have some uh, online assignments and some software assignments, and then they would complete those assignments as well. Right. Um, but that, nothing is 100%. At this point, let me, let me add, add some very important uh, uh, reminders. We are going to submit our education system, uh, like instruction uh, method B, which means asynchronized. What does that mean? Based on the like grade level, uh, it's really hard to put younger kids, especially for lower elementary, like first grade pre K, in, in front of the computer and hey, you're going to see it and you're gonna do what teacher says, it's really hard. And our model gonna give the assignments for sure, but also we're gonna give flexibility for parents, for the students. It's really hard to put the kids in a certain frame, you know, we cannot control at home. And even though, you know, in front of the computer, but they're gonna take some responsibility, you know, like in their age level, small or medium, uh, they're gonna get some responsibility. For middle school, mm -hmm. our teachers, they can set certain time, due date, you know? But uh, like I said, we are working on with our teachers, with our, from our parents, it's flexible. We're gonna give some flexibility, and, you know, but weekly assignments. Mm -hmm. One daily like readings, even you know video interactions, participations. We gonna our goal is to make education easy, not complicated. Our teachers trying their best. I'm I'm gonna be uh, uh, give you one promise. Our teachers are very dedicated. Even though it's vacation, they are still celebrating their birthday. They are calling their parents. Hey, are you okay? Are you safe? I don't tell them what to do as a principal. They are doing by themselves because caring is our first core value. We care, not for money, for humanity, for our character. You know, that's why we become National School of Character in a short time because we care, not only ourselves. We care each student like our own kids. Our campus is one of the most uh, staff kids has one of the most staff kids in our campus. Why? Because they believe in our system and they are training each student like their own child. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> how, how we were talking about earlier, right? That you that your teachers also represent the core, um, 
you call them core principles, right? The, yes. Your core principles of, of what your school represents. That's wonderful. And one additional piece that we did in the fall is everything the teachers taught was recorded. So if that student missed that class, or maybe the parent needed to be with them, you know, and they needed to do it later in the evening, they could actually watch or rewatch the video if they needed to rewatch it at any time. So everything was recorded. It was live. They, the participation was required, but it was also recorded to see they could watch it later. That's great. Um, so before I lose track of this question, um, we're talking about how you guys have had to adapt because of the pandemic, right? And so moving forward in the fall, have you considered, um, Miss Alice asked this question, um, if you've considered continuing extended daycare, if that'll be available um, after school, what does that look like for you all? Yeah, well, actually we're gonna have, if we open like, now we are planning the, our campus, but after school as well, we're going to do like 30% of the capacity, which means uh, there should be a limitation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and we will work on till um, 6 p.m., you know, three uh, after school dismissal to 6 p.m. Uh, once again, uh, we are still planning how to serve better because we don't know how many kids going to apply for after school, you know, mm -hmm. If there are huge demand, we need to say, hey, we have limited room and based on the requirements, you are on the waiting list. Maybe we don't, I don't know, I cannot grant, but we are of course that option for after school care. Great. And and talking about additional things the school, not only do you educate students, you do extended, you might be able to do extended care. Um, what would you do or how are you, connecting to students that um, may have found that they were slipping through the educational cracks, right? With online learning and discerning. How are you able to support those students? Can I, uh, can you ask me the question? Because I know- I, Yeah, I, yes. Yeah. So is there is there any extra- Curricular extra education or summer programming that you're doing um, for for students that have been through the distance learning. Yeah, Ms. Sanchez, can you please mention about our uh, Texas-wide Texas art competition and summer uh, program, you know, each detail you can go with like robotics. Yes, um, well, one of the things that we did is we, of course, uh, left our softwares available for students to use and practice during the summer. Um, we have software for each grade level for each core subject. So students are um, able to continue to do at their level um, their softwares for all their different core subjects. In addition to that, we um, gave the students uh, workbooks. Um, we had a day when they drove through as a drive through to pick up their belongings and we uh, distributed uh, workbooks for all K through fifth grade students. Um, for the next grade level that they're going to be going into the next school year. So they also have that that they can be working on over the summer as well. And we have Texas-wide art competition and our, our teachers, like computer technology teachers, they are also helping uh, our students engage not only academic uh, academic you know instruction in ed education, but also like artwork, like uh, robotics, uh, like uh, you know, other uh, competitions. They 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 are preparing for real world as well, real life as well. We also had a music program um, in. Um, we had a live music program that we um, tried from San Antonio for the students this very last semester, and um, they um, students that participated really enjoyed it. So we're looking into other ways to also be sure to provide the arts as well, you know, um, academic art programs for our students, e even though we are online. That's wonderful. And I'm so glad I'm going through the comments on the side. So parents that are tuning in, thank you so much. We're talking to SST Advancement in Houston. And, um, and so I'm really glad we're asking a lot of different questions. I'm glad the parents that are 
new parents going in next year. Um, just in case you guys didn't know, we have some new parents going in that are asking these questions. We have parents that are still trying to figure out what school, if they want to change their child, what school would be best fit for them. Um, and so that's the whole point in this, right? To talk about what SST advancement offers and, and if it's a good fit for their child, right? Um, one of the questions for um, from a parent named Emily, she asked a little while ago is, is there an open house date uh, determined yet from you guys? Actually, we have it, we are planning, but uh, we are waiting right now uh, to be more, you know, safe for our parents. Now, uh, maybe uh, last week of July, uh, we're gonna uh, have one open house. We schedule it, but it's for on hold position. You know, and as you know, we are now putting our new furnitures to the new building. And also right now, as of today, is the high there's a high risk. I don't I don't wanna put any employee, any any staff member, even any student and parents. Right now I, I'm gonna put this open house uh, as late as possible. But virtually we did have virtual open house i mean last friday i was at the new building i took a lot of pictures so but uh right now i'm i'm kind of scary you know i don't want to put everybody hey come on join <laughs> our open hearts and it's not safe right now right i'm and gonna so be honest with you right I put people in line and wait hey i i please come uh, one by one, keep the six foot, six feet distance, and even kids, it's really hard to control. Hey, we are don't get closer to each other. Mm -hmm. but after everything is ready, we need to make practice. First, I need to train the staff. It's need for everyone. Right. I personally need training how to run six feet distance, social distancing at the campus. I never had that experience. So I need to train myself first and then my admin team. How are we gonna do? How are we gonna have control of the crowd? You know what I'm saying? Even restroom, I need to we need to plan how we're gonna send the kids, how we're gonna send the people if they need the restroom, if they wanna go to, you know, what if they want to see the classroom or computer lab at the same time? How many people we can send, you know, group by group. But for sure, we're gonna have very small size. Let's say, for the okay parents, let's say, sibling parents, we need to work on this detail to be on the safe side. But if they wanna see the building, if they wanna meet with the teachers, they can email us, they can contact with us, they can go to our school web page. It's new, updated one. So they can, we are reachable, 724. <laughs> <laughs> um perfect perfect so i'm yeah there's just so many different little things to think about like how are you gonna have like kids come in um are they all gonna file in at the same time are they gonna go through the same doorway there's how are they gonna go to the cafeteria or how are they gonna have lunch there's so many moving parts that go on um that take a lot of thinking and strategizing and training too right um so I was hoping you could tell me a little bit about what grade levels are available for enrollment next year. Are there specific grade levels that you have um, openings that you don't have openings for? What for parents that are applying, um, what grades are available? Okay, that's a great question. Uh, there are some certain grades uh, that we cannot enroll uh, due to high demand, but there are some grades and we have openings but let me check one more time as of now uh we have we, we we have some waiting list but the thing is let me check one of right now okay okay for we need i think someone open microphone Okay, we need, uh, we have openings for kinder and first grade, 
and second grade. We don't have any openings for third grade. Yeah. There's a huge, huge waiting list on third grade. And we we have openings for fourth grade. And we have openings for fifth grade, but we have six waiting lists, uh, six students on the fifth grade. But still, they can apply. And we have we have openings for seventh grade, seventh grade. So like I said, they can apply. And if anyone uh, transfer to other city or if they move, we are calling from the waiting list in order one by one. You know, okay. if they apply quickly or early, they will be on the uh, first one, mm -hmm. first come, first serve, you know. Right. So that was pre-K, uh, kinder, first, second, second. four, yes. um, fifth, and then seventh and eighth. Yes. So pretty much every grade except for third grade that there's a waiting list. Eight grades, uh, yeah. And, and yeah. sixth grade that there's a waiting list. Yes. Okay. So parents, um, we are going to be answering back in the Actually, comments. Actually, uh, can I make one correction? Yeah. Pre-K is full. We don't have... We have 32 waiting lists. Per K okay. is so gotcha. with high <laughs> demand on per K. <laughs> um, so parents, just so you know, we'll be going back in the comments to um, to answer if you have any questions or anything. We'll go back. Um, just it's good courtesy to to answer the comments. Um, just in case we didn't answer a question in the video, or if there's a new parent that comes and watches this video after it's live, um, those answers will be on under the right under the comments that you've asked okay yeah and also uh comment section our teachers also joining in this and they are also commenting and that's which is good they heard about us because we put this on our school web page and our staff members also answering uh your questions so i recommend you to read the comments because i so thank you our staff members faculty yes. members for answering these questions along our side <laughs> yes, thank you. It's a team effort. It's a team yes. effort. <laughs> that, that makes difference. Yes, that uh, does. Yeah. This school year, we have a very uh, unique visit. Ms. Sanchez, you want to talk about it? Or do you want me to talk about the State Secretary of Education, Ms. Devos? You want to talk about it? Um, I'll, I'll start. Have you let me? Yes. <laughs> we... Um, we, when we became a national school of character, we were invited to Washington DC for their national forum. And we, um, had the opportunity to go to Washington DC, um, before the pandemic. And we visited, um, the department secretary of education's office and we met Ms. Ross and Mr. Ralph, her, uh, assistant secretary. And, um, we talked about education in charter schools and, um, they were curious to know how, a charter school of such little um, bit of time was able to make the National School of Character uh, achievement. And so we talked about our school and what works at our school and um, everything that we're sharing with you today. And um, it was really an amazing experience. Wow. Wow. Um, Congratulations. That's a team effort. That's why I remember that we are working as a team, running as a team, like rocket. <laughs> Thanks, Paswell. We work together. And That's, we hear our leadership among the staff members. Wow. That makes a big difference than when everybody's working independently of each other. There's a big difference and you can feel it, right? You can feel, if I need whatever, I can call so-and-so. If, if anything goes up, something somebody comes up and helps. Um, that's wonderful. Congratulations, you guys. That's huge. That is very big. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to get back to the school year. So <clears throat> in an ideal world, if everything was back, oh, well, not back to normal, right? But we're moving forward. But if, if we were back in school, can you tell me what what day will you start, right? And if you're starting in August and September, what day that will be? Um, I think Shay asked part of that question. Um, and 
And what does the actual day look like for a student? Do they come in? Do they do the Pledge of Allegiance? Do they, like, what, what does a typical day look like? Okay, thank you for that question. It's a really great question. Um, Ms. Santos, I'm going to uh, talk about the calendar, <laughs> then you're going to talk about the daily uh, school life. Okay. Yes, okay. So as of now, we are planning to open our campus August 17, academic calendar. But before August 17, we have teachers training, new teachers training. And the, like you said, we are going to be, you know, normal life sooner or, or later. But we have a lot of uh, trainings and we're going to uh, start our education August 17. That's our calendar. And daily life, Ms. Sanchez, you can go and talk about uh, starting uh, starting before cares, you know, before school. Sure. Um, normally, on the regular school day, um, we have uh, before care, which starts at 7. And students are able to be dropped off on campus at 7. Um, regular uh, um, pick drop-off starts about 7.30, 7.40. Depending, our teachers get on campus at 7.30, and then we start breakfast. So a student would come in through the back door. Um, all the students come in through the same door at that time. We do not have school buses, but we have a drop-off. We have teachers outside opening the car doors and greeting the students um, as they come out of their cars. We have um, numerous daycare buses, so parents do um, use daycare to transport their students to our schools. So we have a large number of daycare buses as well that provide transportation. Um, students come in and they go directly into the cafeteria if they want to have breakfast. Um, about 7.45, then we dismiss the students um, that are in the cafeteria to their regular classrooms and they all walk to their classrooms. Um, school would start probably 7.45, 7.50. And we start with the morning announcements which we do do the Pledge of the Legions. We do the Pledge to both flags. Um, we talk about the core value of the month and we give um, all the announcements for the week, what's going on for the week on campus. And um, then classes would start about eight o'clock. Um, and then we have a nine period scheduled day um, that includes the lunch. And there is a period, uh, there are three different lunch times Lunches start at 10.30, from 10.30 to almost one o'clock. Um, so the students rotate in groups by their grade levels, uh, kinder through second, third through fifth, and then six through eight. And they have um, 20 minutes of either recess or um, not, oh, if they don't have recess, then they do, um, we do do restorative circles where the students um, get in a circle and they talk about a specific subject with the teachers. So it varies depending on the day. Some days they have recess, some days they do restorative circles. Um, and there's 20 minutes for that and 25 minutes for lunch, which makes up one of the periods. Um, after that, then they continue on to their afternoon classes and the bell, the end of the school bell rings at 3.05. And that is when we start dismissal. And um, the majority, not all of the students, the majority of the students go to the cafeteria. Some do um, get dismissed from other areas. And that's we start dismissal. And we again, the teachers are back outside. We're back outside. We're putting the kids in the car. Um, we're sending the majority of them home. And then after school, um, we do normally have tutorials for students that um, need tutorials. And we have after school clubs activities. We have after school care, which is until 6 p.m. for parents that need to pick up their students at a later time. And we have all of our after school activities. Around five o'clock, everything starts really slowing down. And um, six o'clock, everyone's gone from the building. <laughs> <laughs> During the after school, we have options. The ones, uh, students, the ones who need tutoring, they are going to PLA, math, or science. And the others who doesn't need a tutoring, they go to art, P, you know, other clubs, enrichment activities, you know, like uh, uh, chess club, like, you know, the, depends on the teacher's club. They go and they choose like Spanish or, you know, whatever they choose. They have that options as well. 
And once again, uh, that's the reason why we, we become A plus uh, school. We feed the students' needs. If any child needs something, our teachers are feeding what they need. If they need uh, need to be fed by ELA, ELA teacher is feeding that students. Or if the students needs math, or if the students needs uh, extracurricular activities, they are going to social like clubs, like the um, debate club, like a drama club. You know, we have. If um, I really, I really recommend our prospective parents, anyone, they can go to our school Facebook. They can see our pictures what we have done so far. They can get a lot of information. And this is our fourth year. And even though uh, we are a very young school, we make huge difference. And it's really uh, makes, it's really unique that State Secretary of uh, Education, they search each detail and they're happy with our performance. I, um, so on the topic of extracurriculars, of supporting, of, um, supporting your students. I have a really interesting question from Emily and she asked, can parents be involved in clubs, tutoring, after school programs? Yes, yes. Like I said, we are caring. We are caring and they even help our teachers. Ms. Sanchez, you wanna talk about our parent volunteer committee, PVC? Sure, um, we have a parental volunteer committee that we begin at the, at the beginning of each school year. Um, we've had some great um, parents that have supported us in so many different things. Um, we do have a um, security system that the parents um, have to log in through and they have to go online and go through a process to be able to be cleared. Um, once they're cleared, then they're able to come on campus and they can volunteer um, in our activities, um, helping teachers create different things, helping decorate bulletin boards, um, helping in after school clubs, um, many different things. Um, we welcome parent support. And they can see their pictures, I mean, on our uh, Facebook. If they don't see any like uniform, uh, like, you know, school uniform, there's other people are parents. They are serving to the kids. They are serving to the other parents. You know, we are working as a team, as a family. Uh, even field trips, they are coming and helping our teachers. Even, uh, but we have background check. We first, they need to apply from our school webpage. We run background check, you know, and after we scan, they are, we are giving them volunteer uh, tech. And the new building, uh, hopefully we're gonna give them one office for parents, volunteers. So whenever they are available, they're gonna come to campus and they're gonna sit and they're gonna help our teachers. Like I say, we need their parents and uh, we, need, we need their help. And our parents, the best teacher aides, our parents are the best teacher aides. They are helping us, not only at home, but also at, at, uh, at school, after school, before school. We are working together and we would like to get more parents. I'm happy to have that question. I like that. <laughs> That's wonderful. I mean, we talked about it earlier, right? It's it's a whole team effort. Um, yes. It's not just one person or another person. It's everybody supporting um, the child's education and their growth. Um, that's wonderful. So I know we've been getting a couple of questions from, um, it kind of sounds like parents that are already um, enrolled at SST Advancement. Um, but just to quickly recap, just in case some parents are tuning in to the Facebook Live a little late, can you just give a quick summary again of how, um, how your school is adjusting for COVID-19? What students would be allowed on campus? Um, your, their choices as a parent, if they can do virtual, if they can do in person? Um, and when can parents choose what option they would like? kind of a lot, just just a quick summary. I know we, we really went in depth a little earlier, but if you can give a quick summary for new people coming in. Yeah, thank you again. Uh, like I said, we have two options, one on, on campus, uh, the other one is on virtual, online. So on campus, we have very limited uh, capacity, like 30% of the uh, classroom size, which means up to 14 kids per classroom. And we are still uh, working on a schedule based on TA regulations. 
we may have a uh, like half day, full day, you know, depend on the grade level. But once again, it will be very limited, like 14 maximum number of the students per classroom. And on the other hand, we have uh, a synchronized online, online uh, instruction, online education. Uh, and our teachers gonna be uh, flexible. They're gonna give assignments, weekly assignments uh, to their students. And parents and teacher, uh, students, they're gonna work at home. It's kind of uh, uh, virtual education, but one-on-one -on -one interaction, two-way communication, not only between teachers, but also admins as well. Okay. And when would parents be able to um, choose what option they would like? Uh, actually, uh, we already sent survey and we are going to send another one. We know uh, and our teachers also uh, communicate with our parents as well. But like I said, it may change uh, by, by governor, you know, and TA uh, because of the COVID mm -hmm. updates, you know. And how it changes. As of today, we have two options. One yeah. online, one for on, on campus. Perfect. Um, so I'm just going to ask one last question before I have you guys wrap up and add any additional points you would like to discuss about your school. But one last question um, is, is there going to be a language test? Um, yes, for pre-K, uh, for ESL students, they are testing. And uh, for other grades, uh, we don't have. For Only for pre-K grade level. That's great. That's because of the ESL, uh, uh, you know, we, if we want to choose the ones, we need to choose the first uh, at risk students for pre-K. And one of the criteria, the language, like ESL students, if they are tested and eligible, we are getting them first during the enrollment, you know. So I was hoping you guys could um, add any last minute things, something. Yes, uh, I, got, I got one question uh, on the comment. It says when they are going to choose the after school clubs. Uh, and, and I want to choose, uh, I want to make one more correction. Pre-K and kinder, if they come to the U.S. for kinder, kinder students also are going to test it along with pre-K students. And the other came, questions, for, say it again, Ms. Sanchez. If they just came to the U.S., if they're yes. starting school in kindergarten. Yes. And the other question, when they are able to choose the clubs after school starts, so is, if they're going to choose their uh, clubs September, first weeks of September, because first we're going to settle down the school system. We're going to run the regular instruction. After that, we're going to send them clubs because we have new teachers they, and I need to ask them what kind of clubs they need to offer. So it takes um, two or three weeks after school starts. Are there any last questions or last minute things that you wanted to include before we wrap up today? All right, so my last uh, question, I'm very excited and um, to see our new parents, new students, and, and I really want to go back to regular education system, like traditional education system. I can wait, but we need to face the reality. So uh, most probably it's going to be online education. I have uh, um, two kids. They are going to my school. Ms. Sanchez also has two daughters. They are in our campus. So uh, we're going to give them online education and from our campus we are school of science and technology and we are we make the difference by working with you guys with teachers and with uh, students we celebrate each detail together each success each important base and like i said caring is our first core value and we care each of us we care Everybody. Ms. Sanchez, you have another? I talk too much, so Ms. Sanchez, do you want to say anything? <laughs> um, we're very excited to have and meet all of our new parents. Um, we're very excited to whenever we get the uh, opportunity to go into our new building. Um, regardless, we will continue to provide 
um, quality education for all of our students. And uh, we look forward to meeting all the new parents and students. Um, we're ready. We're always ready, right, Mr. Dilley? Yes, even though we are on vacation, we are having three three uh, days meetings in a week, three days a week, you know. So it's kind of our lifestyle. You know, we enjoy working, we enjoy talking to people, we enjoy helping to students, we enjoy teaching. And that's the good, uh, you know, uh, way of life, you know. That's our passion. That's our personal core value of caring and education is our passion. So, and each of I'm very proud of my team members, and each of them very uh, valuable, dedicated, and uh, people. You know, not only educator but also human side as well. They are very helpful, and I have a lot of staff. They move to other city, other states, and whenever they come back to Houston, they just contact with me. Hey, I want to work, and I want to go back to our campus. I have a lot of staff members because of the family and uh, environment and family, you know, positive school culture and because of the caring and support. We have very good teacher retention. Um, I feel we have a really awesome team and we work so well together um, and therefore we're able to share that and provide that to our parents and our students. Wow, that makes a big difference when you do have teacher retention. That means administration is supporting the teachers. That means um, yes. the students are, are being supported as well, right? It's a it's a whole circle, right? It's not just like a linear one part, one part, one part. Um, that's wonderful. What does it mean, circle, Ms. Sanchez? What circle? Uh, caring, integrity, responsibility, <laughs> leadership for everyone. Even the little ones know it. Um, all of the kids know our core values, the circle, yes. Circles are core value, you know. Caring, integrity, leadership, responsibility, citizenship for everyone. I so, love it, I love circle. it. So I, we have a very strong circle and it's all around the world. That's wonderful. So if any parents have any questions after this video, how are they able to get in contact with you? Uh, I'm going to refer them to our school web page and Facebook. Um, I usually respond to all of the comments on Facebook, and we are working as a team. If I miss it, Ms. Sanchez or other team members replying their comments. And uh, on our school web page, we have email addresses. They can reach the related person. So why I recommend it, uh, if it's about the registration, they should contact with the registration first. If, and then other AP or other admins, you know, chain of order of chain, you know, and then it makes easier and simpler and we can save our time. Perfect. And that website is? SSDadvancement.org. Perfect. And we'll make sure to be linking it in the comments as well. Um, if parents, if we weren't able to get you to your questions, we'll make sure to be answering in the comments after um but thank you guys thank you so much it was a pleasure talking with you i'm so glad we got to know a little bit more about sst advancement and yeah. congratulations you. on your thank new you. building yes please visit our school web page and facebook look at our pictures and uh you can get a lot of information okay and i'm very happy to have this uh opportunity with you guys um i feel very happy now i'm very uh joyful so i enjoyed it <laughs> thank perfect you. thank you mr dillian thank you miss sanchez thank you. See you soon. bye See you.